The coalition officer for the presidential elections in River State, Professor Charles Adias, is also the vice chancellor of a federal university in Otuoke in Bayelsa State. In the heat of the collation of the results, Professor Adias had raised the alarm over an alleged threat to his life on the 28th of last month. In this exclusive interview, he shares his experience with Arise Niger Delta correspondent Ovietime George. The 28th of February, 2023, results of the presidential election in River State could not be announced because the state coalition officer, Professor Charles Adias, alleged threats to his life. Eventually, the results were announced at the coalition center in Abuja. But what actually happened? We are in the office of Professor Charles Adias, the vice chancellor of the Federal University of Otuake. Sir, what was your experience? Tell us exactly who threatened you. Well, my name again is Professor Teddy Charles Adias, the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Tokyo, Bayelsa State. Uh, I was appointed as the State Coalition Officer uh, for the presidential election in River State. I was threatened and I've been threatened by several persons. And these threats had come through various means, some by phone calls, some by text messages. And these are either multimedia text messages and some WhatsApp messages. So the threats keep coming. I've received even additional threats this morning. I won't know who is threatening I know too well that these persons have telephone numbers and they are real. And so I won't know who threatened, except for the police that will be able to determine the names of these persons who are threatening. And now the threats are normally that of kill, both myself and my family. The threats are like prayers of causes for the entire family. They are mostly doomsday prophecies and prayers from supposed men of God. Some are lay leaders. So there are many. Was there any form of pressure whatsoever from any direction or any quarters while you were working as coalition officer in River State? No, a scope can never be under pressure. No political party, no persons, to understand the functions of scope who want to lure scope into malpractices. And so scopes can never be because they are only receivers of results. These are results that have been announced by various local government coalition officers. They receive these results on national televisions. They see the results at the same time the public does. And so they cannot manipulate figures. Scopes cannot rig elections. They don't have the power to do that. Scopes cannot cancel results of election. Scopes can only reject results that have computational errors. And that can be seen in case where the total vote cast exceeds total number of accredited voters. That is the only point in which the scope can reject the, the results. I collected the results on the 26th. I collected five local governments rejected results of uh, Odwell and Kana local government because there were computational errors in their results. And so on the whole, I was able to collect successfully three local governments. On the 27th, I collected 18 local governments in addition to Abu Odwell and Kana, remaining two local governments. At the end of my coalition on the 21st, I still received threats. And what gave rise to these threats? It's important to address this. What gave rise to this threat? I saw posts on the multimedia. I saw posts on social media. I saw posts on Facebook where it is alleged that I'm responsible for the non-functionalities of the beavers. And I asked the question, what is my role? And so the next day, with all the threats and the misinformation concerning my name, when I got to the center, I demanded an adjoint coalition and demanded that I make must take the lead in addressing the misinformation 
in the society, they should define the rules of the scope as distant and district from other coalition officers, from the POs to the war to local government. It was upon INEC being able to address the press to clear this doubt that I continued collating and I collected the remaining two local governments. And thereafter, I announced the results and moved the results to Abuja for presentation. I need to add that responsibilities are non-collective in the conduct of election, especially for ad hoc staff. It means that every ad hoc staff stands liable to acts of misconduct arising from his own results and actions. So scope can never be under any pressure in the cause of his duties. Many would like to know, Prof, is this your first time working for the INEC in whatever capacity, not just as a coalition officer? Well, thank you. I have been involved in various elections across states in Nigeria. I had been coalition returning officer for Bayesa Central, and that was in 2019. In 2019, I was returning coalition officer for NIMBY Constituency 2 House of Assembly. In 2019, I was called to rescue the inconclusive election in River State. You recall that the election was inconclusive. The coalition officer absconded from duty. I was invited to go and complete the election, and I did complete the election. But I need to add, with the privilege I have to speak today, that scopes cannot rig election. We've had a lot of hues and cries in the society. If election is to be rigged, election can only be rigged at the level of the polling units, at the level of the wards, and the level of local government. Elections can never be manipulated at the level that is played by the scope. Threat to life could be a bit traumatic. I'm trying to wonder, you know, making a psychological introspection into your mind, what you went through, and perhaps still going through. But in spite of the threat, if called upon again by the electoral umpire body, in whatever capacity, would you be willing to serve again despite threats to your life? It is a civil duty. And as a public servant, I have a responsibility to perform civil duties. So I will. But more importantly is the misinformation. By the time the society comes to appreciate the roles played by ad hoc staff during the election, I'm sure the blackmail we have seen will be put to rest. But one thing that is important, like I said earlier, in academics, community service is key. You need to look at the roles academics play in the society. We play three roles. One is to teach. One is to improve on R1, the research and development. The next is for us to be engaged in community service. A participation in election duties is a community service for academics. And it is important for advancement in academics. And so it is important for the society to know this. We are called to serve. And we are ready to serve this country. For me, I've served this country in, in various spheres. I was in the military as a very young man. I joined the military at a tender age. I served for 12 years in this country. And at due time, I voluntarily applied and I was disengaged. I served in the Nigerian Navy. I still have mates who are still serving today in the military. So we have served, we have paid our dues. I would like to say thank you, Professor Charles Teddy Adias. It's been a wonderful time talking with you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure. Well, we've heard from the man, Professor Charles Teddy Adias, Vice Chancellor. Federal University Otuweke. Well, something I can take away here is he said in spite of the threat to his life, he is still willing to serve this great country, Nigeria, even if called upon by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm.